So far, we've talked about concepts involving encryption and how to generate a strong password and protect it from hackers. Now let's talk about probably one of the more sensitive areas of your communications, your emails. When Alice sends an email to Bob, anyone who gets hold of the email can read it. If Alice sends it while connected to a public Wi-Fi like a coffee shop or a hotel room, Eve could simply be someone else, anyone else, on that network and read her email like an open book. Even if Alice is at home, if Eve works for her ISP, she can get the email easily as well. And if Eve works for the NSA, the Network Snooping Association, she can intercept all of Alice's emails and even put them in a massive database so that she can run searches through all of these collected emails looking for whatever she wants. Why is Eve able to do this? Because the protocol email is sent over was built by government bureaucrats ignorant of security who assumed that everyone on the network was just one big happy family and thus didn't bother to secure it at all. Even though there were lots of other secure messaging protocols at the time from Xerox and others, this email protocol is the one that got used on the internet and is still in use today every time you send an email. Email is like a postcard. You just write the message on the outside and anyone who happens to be anywhere the postcard is going on its way to its destination can easily read it. There is no privacy. Also, there's no authentication either. Anyone can send an email pretending to be whomever they want to be. Eve can send a message to Bob with Alice's email address, or the president's email address, or even make up a fake email address entirely. This lack of authentication is the very reason why spam very quickly became a big problem. Some things have gotten better. Most email servers now support sending email over SSL TLS. We'll talk more about these protocols later in part two, but basically they encrypt the data going to the email server and let Alice know she's connected to the right server and not Eve trying to pretend to be her email server. There are also webmail technologies such as Gmail where Alice makes a secure connection to the website and sends it from there. Of course, Bob also needs to have an encrypted connection to his email server when he gets the email. And there's one more connection we need to worry about. When Alice's email server talks to Bob's, both of these email servers need to make an encrypted connection between them. Unless both sides agree to the encryption, it gets sent in plain text over the internet. Unfortunately, so far, Gmail is the only major email provider that supports server-to-server -server encryption of emails. The bottom line is, when you send an email, assume anyone can read it. Even once we get all the connections encrypted, however, it still isn't good enough. We need full end-to-end -end encryption of emails, where they're encrypted before being sent over any network connection and stay encrypted all the way to the recipient's inbox, only to be decrypted on the machine where they read their emails. Unfortunately, so far, there aren't any good solutions available for universal end-to-end -end encryption of emails. But Alice and Bob aren't helpless. They can set up end-to-end -end encryption between them. We talked about this concept back in part one. Alice creates a public-private key pair, sends her public key to Bob, and keeps her private key to herself. Bob does likewise. Now they can send encrypted emails to each other without having to worry about Eve spying on them. Unless, of course, Eve has managed to fake the keys, substituting her own public key for Alice's. So authentication is important here, as is the ability to sign emails confirming that they are from Alice and nobody else. By far the most prominent solution for end-to-end -end encryption of emails is PGP, which stands for Pretty Good Privacy. Several implementations are available, the most popular ones being GNU Privacy Guard and OpenPGP. All of these are compatible with each other. There are also plugins and extensions for various email software. For example, Enigmail plugs into Thunderbird and automatically decrypts and checks the signature of every email that has matching keys. Browser extensions such as Mailvelope add this functionality to Gmail, Yahoo, and other webmail providers. There are also WordPress plugins that allow for encryption of messages sent via web server. For example, on my Bogosity podcast page, there's a form where someone can send an encrypted email to the podcast email address. All of the encryption is done in the user's browser, only to be decrypted on my computer. There are problems. One big one is usability. If Alice and Bob are both good with computers, it's no problem for them to set it up. But regular users will find it difficult and confusing. We just aren't at a place where we can tell our grandmothers to set up PGP. 
unless grandma had a job working with an ENIAC or something. Another is authentication. How does Bob know he's received the right public key? PGP uses the web of trust model we talked about in part one, but the only way he can be really sure is to exchange keys with Alice directly, either in person or over Skype, and verify the key with a test message. Often groups of people would get together over Skype or wherever and have key signing parties where each person was able to verify the key directly and confirm they got the right one. Even if Bob has gone through all that, there are still problems. Yes, Eve can now sign her emails so that Bob will know they're from her. But signing confirms the sender. It doesn't falsify. Think about it this way. Bob has a device that needs to be placed the right way up. So the manufacturer wrote the word top on the top. Fine and dandy, but what if he's placed it upside down? The word top is where he can't see it and therefore doesn't do him any good. The company should place the word bottom on the bottom, and that will let Bob know that he's supposed to turn it over the right way up. Falsification is much more important than confirmation. So digitally signing an email is like placing the word top on the top of the device, but not writing anything on the bottom. Bob can see that Alice's email is genuine when she signs it, but what about all the emails he gets that aren't signed? What's he supposed to do? Distrust them all by default? That's hardly practical. As with all forms of encryption, it's important to understand what's being encrypted and what isn't. PGP only encrypts the body of the email. It doesn't encrypt any of the metadata. This means that all of the email headers, including the to, from, and subject lines, along with the date and time the email was sent, and other headers, will be sent in the clear. So anyone intercepting the email will see who sent it, and whom they sent it to, and when. And there will also be a problem if any sensitive information is included in the subject line. Here's an actual email someone sent me using the form on my podcast site. Notice that I've completely obfuscated these lines. It appears to be an email I sent to myself, and it's given a generic subject line. The sender's identity, as well as his original subject line, are all encrypted in this mass of seemingly random text that is now the body of the email, and that cannot be deciphered without the private key. But understand, it's only that way because I did it that way on purpose. Normally, the metadata would be visible to ISPs, email providers, and the NSA. It does look like things will be improving, however. Google has announced a new end-to-end -end extension for Gmail, which hopefully will be a user-friendly version of OpenPGP. Yahoo is working on their own solution as well. Hopefully, they'll both do things like manage their own certificates to keep others from spoofing their users. It would also be nice to see this universal and on by default. Both solutions are expected to be ready sometime in 2015. There are some smaller services that do it already, such as Countermail and Hushmail. But they're mostly paid services, and it only works if the recipient has PGP set up as well. Having larger providers like Gmail and Yahoo supporting PGP will go a long way. Another option to secure mail is S-Mime. This is an option which encrypts the body of your email and sticks it in an attachment. It uses the same technology as SSL TLS connections, which again we'll cover later. The big advantage of S-MIME over PGP is that authentication can be done via certificate authorities the same way it is with web pages. But it's still very difficult to set up and use, and it has all of the other same problems that PGP has. It also sends its encrypted message as an attachment to a blank email, which is very confusing to someone who doesn't understand what's going on. So there are people out there who think the solution is to just scrap what we're doing now and come up with a new solution. The problem with PGP and S-MIME is that they're trying to add themselves on to an ancient and obsolete email system designed by people who were complete morons when it came to security. There are now efforts to make a new email system that is secure from the ground up. One is called BitMessage. It's a decentralized, trustless, proof-of-work, open-source solution that not only encrypts the messages, but the metadata as well. When your BitMessage client comes online, it connects to as many nodes as it can find, but really it only needs one, and exchanges information. Every node has a private key that works for both decryption and authentication. There is no way to spoof the sender of the message. Any messages for you will be shown in your inbox. Note that your computer may store messages for other connections, but it won't be able to read them as it doesn't have the private key. Sending a message requires that your client compute a proof of work. This must be completed for the network to transmit your message. The longer the message, the more difficult the proof. 
By imposing this artificial cost on the system, BitMessage discourages spam. One problem is, your address isn't something sensible like alice at domain.com, but a mess of base 58 characters that resembles a Bitcoin address. But addresses can be copied or put into a QR code, so this isn't a major problem. The bigger problem with this is the issue of adoption by users who wouldn't like the unfriendly addresses. However, as contact lists and address books become more ubiquitous, this shouldn't be an issue. If users don't have to remember phone numbers, neither should they have to deal with this address after the initial setup. I mean, who memorizes phone numbers anymore? Another issue is that nodes only retain messages for two days, unless they're the sender or the receiver. This is a problem if Alice sends a message to Bob, closes her client for two days, and Bob doesn't open his client in that same time period. By the time Bob gets his client online, Alice's message to him has been deleted by the network. The source code is available, and the developers are currently looking for someone to do an independent audit of the code. But although you can download the client and start using it now, it's still early days for this technology. It's still in beta, and it's seen its share of security issues so far, and so it shouldn't yet be considered a viable solution. But keep an eye out for the proper release sometime in the unspecified future. Another proposed system is the brainchild of Ladar Levison, who shut down his secure email service LavaBit in August of 2013 after a court ordered him to turn over his users' private encryption keys to the government. He shut down the service since it was no longer secure. Since then, he's teamed up with Phil Zimmerman, the inventor of PGP, together with Zimmerman's partners John Callis and Mike Janke of Silent Circle. Together, they're making what they call DIME, Dark Internet Mail Environment. The goal is to build a secure email structure with end-to-end -end encryption that both uses strong encryption and is easy to use. Which is quite an undertaking. The idea is that no one other than the sender and the recipient, not even the administrators, can get the decrypted message. The NSA can request emails and security keys from an administrator all they want, he just won't have any to give them. Not even the metadata. But this has just recently been announced, so details are sketchy and we're a ways off from even beta software. So again, it's something to look out for in the future. So secure encryption of email can be done, but sadly, it just isn't ready for prime time. But now you know the technologies and solutions that are available, and hopefully will be available soon to make this much easier and more ubiquitous. The sooner it happens, the sooner we'll all be safer. In the next video, we'll look at how web pages are encrypted from prying eyes.